No better! An historic bowling alley strikes up a chord. Keep doing it. Keep working hard. Olympic dreams are reality. One Archdiocesan Catholic school graduate. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And congratulations to a new group of ordained priests. The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today on Catholic Chicago. I'm Father Greg Sackowitz, Rector of Holy Name Cathedral in Chicago. Late spring was a busy time for the Archdiocese. We ordained a new class of priests ready to serve the Church and Catholics of Chicago. Hundreds of people filled Holy Name Cathedral, all to witness the joyous event with these four new priests. We had the opportunity to speak with a couple of them. We are blessed to have each and every one of you here today. You, especially the mothers and fathers of these men, were the first heralds of God's word for your sons. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. All of these years, I've been preparing for this, this opportunity to offer up this sacrifice. So carrying all of the prayers, carrying all of the joys, carrying all of the difficulties that already family and friends have asked for me to pray for them, to be able to, to offer those up on the altar, just really excited for these hands to be anointed. Relationship with the Lord gives us a relationship with His Church is is a different way of looking at life. It's a way that frees us from all of those concerns and sets us free to simply focus on the only thing that matters, and that's giving our lives away in love for Jesus, which looks like giving our lives away in the service of His people and of His Church. So that's ultimately why I'm standing before you here today, because I'm convinced that that's true and that that's the message that the world needs to hear. A solemn ceremony serves as a poignant reminder to honor every life, regardless of circumstance. In June, Catholic cemeteries buried the remains of hundreds of indigent and unborn individuals. The burials ensure that everyone, regardless of financial or social standing, is laid to rest. 
with care and respect. I want to thank all of you who are visitors who have come here today to pray for the deceased whom are being laid to rest on this day. Your presence here today is not only a sign of your faith in God's love, but is also a sign of respect for those who have been entrusted to our care. This afternoon's prayer service marks a most outstanding visible example and milestone in what mutual care and concern for all of God's children and working together can accomplish. The Archdiocese is fortunate to work with a network of professionals recognizing and empowering female voices in its mission and ministry is especially important. In May, Catholic Charities sponsored a gathering at Old St. Pat's Church, the goal honoring women who have provided significant contributions and leadership to the faith community. We're gathering here today to talk about change in the church and some of what we're beginning to see about hope, joy, and optimism is the changing role of female leaders. The mission of Catholic Charities USA is to provide service to people in need and to advocate for justice in social structures and to call the entire church and people of goodwill to do the same. I think maybe one of my themes today is God works in unexpected ways. I would say that most of my career I was preparing for some call that I knew was coming that I didn't know what it was. What I definitely wanted to do all along was to do something to positively impact my moral heroes and heroines in the church. And I think it is undisputed that the church is lifting up a new generation of women and a new generation of dialogue. We have, some of the, I think, some of the best talent in the Archdiocese of Chicago who could have done anything else who've chosen to come, many who are here. And I, and I think you see the result of that. Whatever the presenting reason for a person to come to Catholic Charities is, it always leads to a continuum of care aimed at lifting that person and their family out of poverty. So I wanna thank you both for being role models of what is possible. You could call this next story a sheer act of solidarity. These parents, staff, and students at Queen of Martyrs School let their hair down for a very noble cause, childhood cancer research. The atmosphere was buzzing as head after head was shaved, raising money and providing hope.
St. Baldrick's is a charity that helps fund childhood cancer like research, you know, studies into figuring how to treat childhood cancer. In 2020, our son was actually diagnosed with leukemia. So we're just here today to like celebrate Crispin, our son being in remission, and then just kind of build support and raise money for more childhood cancer research. Well, a beautiful, wonderful opportunity for uh, young people, the school community come together and to support a very important cause. And it's very uh, dear to us here as a community since one of our students, you know, uh, suffered from cancer. And uh, thank God he's now in remission, but it's a beautiful uh, way of not only talking the talk, but walking the walk. An accomplished wrestler is sharing his story from the high school mat to the Olympic stage. Joe Rao is a 2009 graduate of St. Patrick High School, the Northwest Side. Rao will be representing the U.S. Olympic wrestling team in Paris this summer. This past May, he returned to his alma mater to give the ultimate motivational speech. This time, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the microphone 2024 United States Olympic team member, Joe Rao. It's, it's something I've been going for since I knew what the Olympics were. And it became like more and more realistic as time went on. But the hard thing about recent years was getting so close twice and uh, not getting to go. So finally getting to go is just a dream come true, man. I think that's what I wanna impart on you guys as an Olympian now that like, if I would have taken off the gas at all, if I ever would have stopped finding a way to get here to go to school, if I ever would have found a way, you know, to stop wrestling, to stop trying as hard in the classroom, I don't think I ever would have been an Olympian. You know, so what you're doing every day, whether or not it's working out for you yet, keep doing it, keep working hard, you know? And it doesn't matter if you're not successful now, you might be talking to your high school when you're 33 years old being successful, you know? Uh, I took away the fact that, you know, if uh, Joe Rao can do it, you know, I, I can do it as well. And that, you know, I could follow in his footsteps. And if I just believe and work hard, that I can do anything. He's a g great role model. And it's somebody to look up to is, you know, I have Olympic dreams as well. I, w I want to make sure I enjoy it while giving myself the best opportunity to be successful out there. So uh, for me, it's like, I think I can go and win it. I think I can go get a medal. And that's, that's my goal. At the same time, whatever is, you know, lays in store for me out there, whatever my destiny is, um, embrace it and really enjoy this experience while doing everything you can. At the end of the day, focus on what you can control, you know? For young Catholics, receiving First Holy Communion is a spiritual milestone in their faith journey. In May, we went to St. Clement Parish in Lincoln Park, where these boys and girls received the body and blood of Christ for the very first time.
The giving spirit is alive and well at parishes across the Archdiocese. For example, hundreds of volunteers at St. Clement Parish fanned out across the city's north and west sides, all to do their part for the parish's annual service day. It was a special delivery for one Catholic school in Chicago's West Lawn neighborhood. This past spring, children cheered outside St. Nicholas of Palatine School as vans carrying donated school supplies were handed out for a bunch of happy students and staff. In addition to my many pastoral duties, there's another feather in my cap that you may not be aware of. For over 40 years, I've been involved in raising and caring for canaries. It's a passion of mine that brings a touch of joy, harmony, and even music to Holy Name Cathedral. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to some of my fine feathered friends. I've always had this fascination of birds Honestly, don't know why. I first thought about raising canaries when I was in high school, 
at Holman Park Ridge, had a couple of canaries go off to the seminary in college, ordained in 79. And during my deacon year, right before ordination, a professional breeder introduced me to canaries again. But there's many different types of canaries. I like the Gloucester canaries. They've got some beetle haircuts. In fact, some of these canaries have more hair than I do. Seven days old. And there's mama to the right, papa to the left. When a baby canary is born, it's the size of my thumbnail. I love the song of the male canary. Females chirp, males sing. When I was breeding canaries 40 years ago. I had four eggs with a hen. The fourth egg started to open, but the baby could not break through out of the shell. So, Father Greg to the rescue. I took the egg, took a hot pen, sterilized it, and put a few holes, further cracks into the egg shell to help the baby. The canary broke free. However, that baby canary died three days after breaking through the eggshell. Why did the baby die? You didn't allow the baby canary to struggle with life itself. And by not allowing that canary to struggle with life itself, it wasn't strong enough to survive as a canary. A religious sister is raising awareness one brush stroke at a time. Sister Norma Pimentel is the Executive Director of Catholic Charities in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. For three decades, she has been on the front lines supporting migrants seeking refuge along the Texas-Mexico border. However, it's her work as an artist that has captured the struggles that these immigrants have faced. Recently, Sister Norma was in Chicago to speak about this facet of her ministry. She took some time to share her faith journey with us. Faith really challenges us to, to not stay back, not to hold back, but to live out our faith is to live out and reach out to those who are marginalized, those who are discarded. What I've always found in, my pro in the time that I spent with immigrants and, and become present to them, the most important thing that we can do is be present to them. Allow ourselves to be there and accompany them in whatever it is that they're going through, and God will let you know exactly what He wants you to do. Well, it captures the moment of what I see when I come and encounter an immigrant family and I see them for the first time. That moment stays with me and I'm able to, I probably snapped a shot and, and, and was able to capture uh, that moment in a, and I can be able to put it in, in a painting because the painting reflects that, you know, reflects that moment when I, what I saw, you know, and I try to make sure that expression of that face of that child or that mother really describes that moment how I saw it. Well, I don't see it as a complicated issue. It's we make it complicated by the fact that we don't want to address it. We don't want to find solutions. I, because it's so simple and it's very clear to me that God puts in our heart to care for one another, to reach out and, and care for that person, that we will find Jesus where and he or she that is suffering, that's hurting, that's where we'll find him. And so it's very clear that if we believe in a God that loves, a God that invites us to uh, come together as one family. Okay. And so I think when we don't do that, we, we break away from the true presence of God in us. There's a hidden gem located on Chicago's northwest side that could be right up your alley. 
in the basement of Immaculate Conception School, you will find the oldest bowling alley in the city. We went to check out this piece of history. It's been rolling along for 100 years. This bowling alley is 100 years old, and this was used as a social gathering point for the seminarians and for the priests that were living on the property. My father actually managed this place for 30 years, from 1969 to 99. And then about nine years ago, they needed a new manager, and uh, I guess I was the obvious successor. We have a storage room in the back that is absolutely filled with shelves of replacement parts. You can't find these anywhere. When it comes to bowling, this is a church league. Now, none of these guys are professionals or even semi-professionals. It's the camaraderie. It's the gamesmanship that everybody has with each other. It's got a connection that you can't even explain. Yeah! I like it! Don't forget, you can connect with Catholic Content Daily their Diocese of Chicago by logging onto our YouTube channel, Catholic Chicago. That's where you'll find links to all our programs and reports celebrating our diverse community of faith. Also available in podcast form wherever you get your podcasts. And that brings another edition of Catholic Chicago to a close. We want to thank you very much for joining us. I'm Father Greg Sackowitz. Until next time, may God bless you and hold you in the palm of his hand. We invite you to watch segments of Catholic Chicago and hundreds of additional Catholic videos at youtube.com forward slash Catholic Chicago. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter.